Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabi ana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ahabbat fi Allah continuing on in our discussion of the tafsir kalimat tawhid by Sheikh Rabi' bin Hadi al Madhali, Hafidullah Ta'ala. The Sheikh mentioned the hadith of Ibn Umar, Radiallahu Ta'ala, in Buni al Islam al Khams. Islam was built on five the testification that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the last prophet and messenger establishing the prayer. Giving the zakat. Fast in the month of Ramadan and making Hajj for the one who's able to do so. The Sheikh said, so so these are the pillars of Islam. And the testification that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah is the foundation of the whole religion. The Shahada, the Shahada, this is the Miftah Jannah. It's the key to paradise, to bear witness that there's nothing, no one worthy of worship except Allah That's the key to Jannah. Wa miftah sa'ad. And it's also the key to happiness. When you're practicing true Iman, when you're making tatbiq of the shahada. And he says, and no person can enter into Islam except by it. And if he commits any of the things which nullify it, then he goes out of Islam. So that shows us Ahabat Allah. The shahada enters us into Islam, miftah. the Miftah Jannah and that there are Nawaqid there are those things which negate one's Islam take one out of the fold of Islam make them a disbeliever in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make them men from the people who necessitates their khulud finnar their perennial Residents in the hellfire. Wa'iyadun billah. Wa'iyakum min al nar. And then he says, in its meaning, there is none who truthfully has the right to be worshipped except the law. The Sheikh then says, You say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. There is no God worth, meaning you testify that Allah alone is the one who deserves to be worshipped. And that the worship done to other things, all of it is invalid. Whether it be to prophets, angels, the righteous people, trees, the sun. the moon, all of these things worship besides Allah but this worship is invalid meaning that there is ibadah which is ibadah haqiqi the real ibadah, the real worship which is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and then there is ibadah batil there is worship which is shirk 
which is the other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even when you see people who claim to be Muslim, but yet they hold their ulama in such high esteem that when their ulama says something is halal, even if it is haram, they accept it as halal. And if their ulama make which it, that which is haram, halal or that which is har, uh, halal haram, then they follow them. Those are those who have taken their scholars and their priests and their rabbis, mindunillah, as gods. وَإِيَّاذٍ بِاللَّهِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ وَمِنْ شِرْكُ وَكُفْرِ Well, all that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus, the believer testifies that Allah alone is the one who deserves to be worshipped, and nothing, even an atom size, shares the right to be, uh, shares that right with him. So if any of the acts of worship, which solely deserves to be done sincerely to Allah, to be directed only to him, are directed or done to other than Allah, then this person has created partners with Allah and has committed shirk. So this is, uh, Islamically, we consider this criminal and false ibadah that you join with partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship or you take others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't forgive if a person dies upon that. Qala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabi al-kareem in Allah la yaghfiru an yushrika bi wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha. Verily Allah does not forgive that you worship, you associate partners with, with him, but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive that one dies upon shirk because it negates the maqasid al-ibadah, the, the, the point of ibadah, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Kitab al-Kareem, that I've not created mankind in jinn except for what? Except for the purpose of worshiping me. So that negates the divine purpose of our creation. Our creation is not just to enjoy even this beautiful, beautiful creation I'm in. If you could only smell the smells, the smells here, I would say are worth thousands of dollars. Just the smell, it's so beautiful here. I can't even articulate how beautiful that smell is and I will miss it when I go back to Saudi Arabia. If I could only have it in a bottle, the smell of these trees. But that's not the maqasid al-ibadah. It's not just to let the fil khulq. It's not just to just indulge in the beauty of the creation, even though the crea creation is beautiful and magnificent and majestic. But it was created by the exalted and almighty al-khaliq. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created this. He created this for us to actualize, to realize, to reflect, use this as a means to reflect and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, to worship him and him alone. That's why he created it, not just for us to enjoy, to eat, sleep, and drink, and that's it. But rather, this, this beautiful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is here for us to use and benefit from and to reflect on him subhanahu wa ta'ala and reflect upon the worship and the greatness of him subhanahu wa ta'ala and to exalt him and to seek his assistance and help and support in every respect in every way because he subhanahu wa ta'ala created all this and it will all go And then the Sheikh says, therefore it is obligatory on us to know the meaning of La ilaha illallah. Many people don't know the meaning of the statement, La ilaha illallah, and they also don't know the meaning of ibadah, the meaning of worship. They say that the statement means there's no creator nor any sustainer, and there's none who gives life and causes death, and there's none who benefits or causes harm except the law. This is their meaning. They make their meaning and they suffice their meaning with that. And in reality, 
the speech of theirs is true, but it is not the meaning of la ilaha illallah. So their speech is true, meaning there's a, all of those things are haq, but that's not the complete meaning of la ilaha illallah. And the one who holds that is only the meaning of la ilaha illallah can make those claims and acknowledge that, but then they go against tawheed al-uluhiyya, that the ibadah, tawheed al-ibadah, that the tawheed, that the worship belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So they can acknowledge those things. And in fact, you find that the Jews and the Christians and many other religious communities acknowledge that. They say that there's the creator who created these things and he sustains and he, and in fact, they attribute it to the universe or they attribute it to some force or some power or the divine, but they don't go beyond that because then they commit shirk and they negate that claim. They don't give, as the ulama, they mention, tawheed. That the Tawheed of the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that necessitates Tawheed al Ibadah, which means the fact that you would not acknowledge those things, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship necessitates that you then act upon that claim by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So that's how Tawheed Arububiyah Yastelzimu Tawheed Al-Uluhiyah that it necessitates Tawheed Tawheed Al-Uluhiyah the Lordship, Tawheed Al-Ibadah. Then the Shaykh says, Verily this speech which they say is belief in Tawheed al rububiyyah and this and even the Quraysh and those nations which came before them who disbelieved in the messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, they all used to believe in this type of Tawheed. They believe that Allah is the God of the heavens and the earth and that he is the creator of the universe and the disposer of its affairs. But still they didn't acknowledge that he is the one who deserves to be worshipped. And the pr proofs in the Quran and the Sunnah show that there is a difference between the Tawheed al-Rububiyyah and the Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah or Tawheed al-Ibadah. Although both of them are the sole rights of Allah alone, the proofs show that Rububiyyah has specific meaning and attributes and Uluhiyyah has specific meaning as well. So this here the Shaykh is, is letting us know, as I was mentioning, that uh, Tawheed al-Rububiyyah yastalzimu Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah, that it necessitates that you then act upon that belief that Allah is the creator, sustainer, the planner, the razak the provider. Uh, and all of his divine uh, names and attributes and his lordship you know he is al-malik al-qudus and that he subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledging all that is a part of tawheed that's tawheed al rububiyyah but then it necessitates that you have tawheed al uluhiyah that you then therefore worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and that those nations and the nations before, the Mushrikeen of Quraysh, that they had concepts of Tawheed ar -Rububiyya. They would attribute it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then when things became, when things became uh, easy for them, they would continue to worship their idols. But when they got into times of great distress, that you found that many of the mushrikun would direct their worship or their dua and their supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then when it came to times of ease,
they attributed it to their idols and they used their idols as a wasila and a means to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and made shafa'a with them. Wallahu musta'an. So, the texts show that it is a must on everyone to believe and know these categories of Tawheed. Thus the Kuffar used to differentiate between the Godship or, and Lordship of Allah and they used to acknowledge the Tawheed al just as Allah exalted says about them Fi Kitab al Kareem, Qala Subhana Wala in Sa'altum Sa'altuhum Men Khalaka Samawati Wal Ard the Yukulun Allah Kulil Hamdulillahi Bel Akhtharuhum La Yalamun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fi Kitab al Kareem And indeed, if you ask them who has created the heavens and the earth, they will surely say the, uh, the Almighty, the All-Knower created them. So they acknowledge that. If you ask them in debating with them, in argumentation, they'll acknowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of this, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that He is mighty and majestic. Thus they used to acknowledge the Tawheed al They did not contradict this, and this is shown in many verses which have come in many surahs in the Qur'an but they did not believe in Tawheed al uluhiyyah Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala says in informing of their state innuhum kanu idha qila lahum la ilaha illallah yastakbirun uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem truly when it was said to them la ilaha illallah None has the right to be worshipped, but Allah, they puffed themselves up with pride and denied it. So it shows that they had the kufr istikbar, you know, they had the kufr of being arrogant. Not giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's haq out of arrogance. That is a wretched state to be in. To know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you, refuse to worship Him and Him alone due to arrogance. La hawla wa la quwwata. Illa billahi al-azim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabih al-kareem, He has made the ilah into one ilah. Verily, this is a curious thing. And the leaders among them went about saying, go on and remain constant in your ilah. Verily, this is a thing designed against you. Meaning, a matter that is in opposition against our gods. Thus they took other things to worship, even though they testified and acknowledged that Allah alone is the creator and the sustainer. In their corrupt ideologies, they set partners to Allah and worship. So you can see that how arrogance deceived and clouded the mushriks that they thought that was gharib, that was ajib, you know, something strange to worship only one God, to negate all those other false gods, even though they considered them to be haq. And thus the Prophet ﷺ came to them, calling them to this tawheed, tawheed al uluhiyah but they believed in him, disbelieved in him, even though they still didn't disbelieve or deny him in the Tawheed al rububiyah So they accepted rububiyah they denied al uluhiyah As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we can have it kareem. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِبُوا تَعْقُوتِ فَمَنْهُمْ مَنْ هَدَى مَنْ هَدَى اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في كتاب الكريم. And verily, we have sent among every ummah a messenger wor saying, Worship Allah alone and avoid or keep away from Tagut, those false deities. 
Then of them were some who Allah guided. So meaning when the Dawah to Tawheed came to some of the people, they accepted, as with the Quraysh. Some of them accepted the Dawah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, became his companions and his followers. But Akhtarahum la ya'lamun, most of them they didn't know and they didn't accept. And likewise, this was the case of all the messengers. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَكَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولِينَ نَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ Which Tani Butagud, we sent to every nation. وَلَكَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولِينَ We've sent to every nation a messenger. And نَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ Which Tani Butagud And proclaiming to worship Allah alone and avoid those things which are worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's Tawheed al-Uluhiyah. That's Tawheed al-Ibadah, Tawheed of worship. Directing all the worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.